It's a fascinating decision here, and it's not entirely unprecedented. He is the fourth top five prospect in the ESPN 100 era, so going back to 2007, to forego college. He's the second top overall recruit to do so. The other one was Brandon Jennings in 2008. I'm fascinated by this story, and here's the man with the insight, our insider I was just shocked because, like, out of Fresno, California, you know, no, nobody really come out of Fresno, so it's like different. I was, I've been working and stuff, so it's just a surprise. I was happy. Well, what can you tell us about yourself, uh, where you're from, and um, you know, when you started playing? Um, anything about your background, your family, that kind of thing? Well, uh, I started playing like in third grade, but like it wasn't my main sport; it was football. So then. I got injured, and then I went to basketball, and I started playing that, started working out, and then, you know, my dad left, so it was just me and my mom, my, me and my mom, we fine through it all, so, you know, and then we just kept working and working, and that's how I'm here today. What about as a player? As a player, uh, for later on, hope to be at, like, t high D1 school, like Kentucky or something like that, because that's my dream school, so, yeah. Look at what the NBA is doing here. Essentially what you're taking are top prospects. You know, you're offering the opportunity. Let's say, for example, you're one of those rare stars coming out of high school where it's clear that you're destined for the NBA. Going overseas or they've gone to Australia or China or someplace like that. Well, guess what? The NBA said, we're tired of sending our scouts all the way over there. We're tired of being uh, devoid of the opportunities for these young men to really, really develop their skills and what have you because they need to go someplace else just to earn money because the NCAA won't allow them to do so, particularly when it comes to profiting off of their likeness. Well, here's a solution. Even though the average salary in the G League is thirty-five dollars to $50,000, we're here giving these guys a half million dollars. I'm told in Jalen Green's case, it's definitely more than a half a million dollars. Plus, we're giving them the option. They can go to college if they want to, and we will pay for their education. So we're not... The G League is, yeah, sure, the average salary for different lower-level players may be um, a middle-class salary, which, by the way, has its own benefits. Uh, rather than college, and so maybe some kids would say, no, I think I'll do better going to college, whether I make the NBA or not. But for the elite prospects, Stephen A said several times, half a million dollars or more, it's good. I would say, first start off with making your circle small, uh, keeping a small, small circle that you can talk to and that you really trust, so you have a good deciding process people you can talk to about it um, and within like coming down to a decision just go over all the pros and cons what's going to be the best decision for you and your family um, and if your ultimate dream is to get to the NBA that's that's going to be the biggest thing for you so just stay locked in keep getting better yes sir perfect love it Max, when you brought up the issue of star power, I, I think that was something that is applicable to a Zion Williamson or a Trey Young. But I, I also feel like we're moving into a different realm here within the basketball space, guys. And I, I've said this before, and I know it breaks a lot of college basketball fans' hearts. But when you look at the pecking order of notoriety around individual players, right? It goes NBA, then it goes high school, then it goes college. Like, it's hard for you guys to tell me who some of the top college players are this year in college basketball, right? Uh, the deciding factor was just getting better and preparing myself for the NBA. That's the ultimate goal. And they are giving me the opportunity to train with pros, be around pros, and uh, still get the education because they're paying for you. First question is, can you talk about like the transition from San Joaquin to prolific prep? I for sure take basketball 
more seriously like it's more just straight basketball the transition it was it wasn't very hard because it's, it's what we do we got a feel for the game so we adapt eventually um it's just about learning spots knowing where to be at nba terms and things like that um obviously the strength and physicality got stronger but that's pretty much the only difference, the course longer, people are faster. I mean, you're, everyone's just as just as athletic as you. So, uh, it helped me a lot with that. Uh, so, I I learned to keep my circle tight, choose my friends wisely. I'm always in the gym every day working. That that's what changed a lot. Usually it was just one day, off and on, but now we're in the day uh, in the gym every day. So yeah. How have you changed physically in the last year, um, and, and and how is your game evolving? Uh, my game evolved. I work on my shot. Last year I was missing a lot of shots. Where does your energy and intensity level? Where does that come from? Uh, I just want to keep my spot. I just want to keep my spot on the rankings. I just want to keep being well known. I want to do that, so yeah, I'm just going to keep working. That's all it is. I don't want to be known as a hype man or nothing like that. So yeah. Uh, probably when the ESPN rankings came out when we were in Argentina, that's when the, the target really came. I got ranked number two. People started coming after me, talking, and I just had to keep working and get better. The differences, it, it was more competition, playing on a bigger stage, so. What about like the lifestyle? I mean, it, it was like, that was basically like my year of college. Like that was basically my year of college. I'm um, going to prolific. Uh, it was traveling to go play. <laughs> we stay, and staying in different places, playing on bigger stages, so. What went into the process of deciding with the G League? It took a lot of time, but I mean, my ultimate goal is to get to the league, so um, I thought why not better be a better thing to go to the G League where I'm going to learn NBA terms, NBA offense, play against people who play the NBA, G League dudes, so yeah.
through in your low lunge. Perfect. So all y'all grab one of your blocks, place it under your left hand. So that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to put pressure on the floor. Place your right hand on your knee and then press it away from your lunge past the right shoulder. Prolific prep. I would probably go work out in the morning. And then go to practice for a prolific like later that day after school. And then maybe in the gym at night. But now it's workout all in the morning, Monday through Friday. And you choose to get extra shots up on the weekend. Right now, the times I wake up, I wake up like 7. The bus leave at 7.30. And then we go to practice. Practice start at like 9. We do weights for an hour and then on court for an hour. I'll probably get up shots in the morning and get back in the gym at night. Jalen, okay, you played Friday, you looked really good. We're at USA Basketball training camp. And then Saturday you show up with a boot on, so obviously this is a, a, an injury that's been bothering you. Give me an update. Uh, right now I'm dealing with a hairline fracture. Uh, it's really not that bad, honestly, but you know, I've been playing it all summer since Argentina, and then I finally got it checked out before I came out here, so. I thought I was going to be good, so I played that day, and then it ended up being at its worst pain that I've ever felt it, so I just, you know, went to the doctor. My mom said I should just rest it out. It's, I mean, the mini camp's important, but I mean, June is where it's really at, so I just sat it out. Well, you still look good, and the competition is tough here. Um, you're the number one player in the class. This summer, you had a few guys come up and try to steal that from you, you know, Scotty Barnes, uh, Evan Mobley came, even Anthony Edwards kind of made a push. Does that motivate you to kind of stay on top? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, they're all great players. You know, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, uh, Anthony Edwards, they're great players. But um, that's not, that just motivates me to keep working harder, stay in the gym more, and, you know, fight for that spot back. Uh, it's a blessing. I mean, a lot of people really don't make it out of Fresno. So, um, I mean, there's been a couple for sure. Quincy Pondexter, the Lopez brothers. Paul George, but he wasn't really from Fresno. But uh, I said that I'm next, I, I think it's pretty lit. I start Jalen Green. Jalen, you're no stranger to this camp. You've been here forever. How does it feel to continually represent Team USA and be out here competing with these guys? Uh, it's good. It's always good coming here, playing against good competition. Um, I feel like a vet, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I'm a senior. I, we were just talking about it uh, yesterday that PJ Washington, all them dudes was here, and we felt like little bros, like looking up to them. Now we got the little bros looking up to us, so yeah. it, it's a it's a change, and it, it feels good. I'm excited for my recruitment. It's coming down. Christmas is coming up, so I mean, it's, it's gonna be exciting to what I, what I do. USC, you visited unofficially. That's more of a local school, just being in the LA, and I know you've been there before. But did you take anything extra from that visit, either with the conversation with the coaches or knowing that you could go in and play alongside Evan Mobley? I mean, I like playing with Ev. Me and Ev played together on uh, the USA team yeah. twice already. Uh, so I mean, I think I think the biggest thing for LA is just like the platform. Mm -hmm. You got all that. I could build my brand there and stuff like that. You got LeBron, you got Bronny, you got all these great players in LA. So like just to build my brand because I know I'm gonna do my hooping on the other side I know I'm gonna handle that so it's just you know brand wise okay, when you look at it I mean you're one of the top players in the country and we just ran through a list of schools and not a single blue blood do you know what I mean and why was it important for you like this was the right these were the right schools for you it wasn't necessarily the biggest spotlight I mean it depends like, it's all up to me at the end of the day um, not what everyone else wants you know, you're a top kid, so they just expect you to go to a blue blood school, things like that. So, I mean, why not be different? And being different is like one of my main things, you know, the whole unicorn thing. So, I mean, why not just be different, pick schools that no one's really looking at or schools that people wouldn't even think of going to? Decision time frame? 
It's, it's getting smaller. I'm getting nervous, but uh, it's a lot of pressure on me, a lot of stress. So I'm just ready to get out the way. Are you still gonna decide on Christmas Day? Yeah. yeah. That's the plan. I am. Why Christmas Day? It's a good day. <laughs> it's a really good day. So you're either gonna give like a giant present to one school or a lump of coal to the rest of the schools. They're, they're all gonna get a box, and it's just <laughs> one's gonna say I'm coming here, and another one's just gonna thank you. I appreciate thank you. you recruiting yes. me. I like that. Um, and what is the most important? Like we went through small market and then marketing and then having good relationship with the coaching staff. But what is what, is, what are some more characteristics that are important to you? Um, I think that's that's pretty much it right there. I mean, those are the main things that really hit me. Um, my parents is big on like people who keep it real with me. You know, got to tie your circle up, things like that. So for a coach just to come in and sugarcoat it is not going to help me at all. I just need a coach that's going to keep it real because that's not what they're going to do at the next level. So I just, that's what I need. Uh, I don't think that, I don't think that really hit me like that yet. Um, I'm still in the G League. I'm not where I want to be fully. This is not my, my dream all the way. Still got a lot of this to work to, you know, um, to get better at, so. Jalen Green of the G League Ignite team. We're here in Walnut Creek, California. Jalen, appreciate you taking the time, man. Yes, sir, thank you for having me. So, you've been out here since what, August? August, I was one of the first people here. So, what what were your first impressions, I guess, when you, you first got out here? And I guess, what has the whole journey been like so far? Uh, when I first got out here, it was different for me because, you know, you're away from your family. It's the first time that you're just on your own. So, it was something I had to adapt to, but, um, Overall, the experience has been good. I'm learning a lot on and off the court and getting stronger, faster. Um, what can I say? Uh, I think I'm getting better overall, so I think that's the best thing. And what has it been like to be around pros? You know, you have almost all walks of life, right? You have Amir Johnson, who's played in the NBA, Jared Jack, who's played in the NBA, yeah. Bobby Brown, who's like a legend overseas. Yeah. Um, what has that been like to be kind of in this environment? Um, it's been good. Um, all the vets are like big bros to me. Uh, they give me advice. I can go talk to them, kick it with them. Um, it's been it's been fun though. They give me advice. Uh, they get on me when I'm slacking. Uh, so yeah, overall it's just been a good experience with the vets, and I could consider them all my big bros. And you had every major college on you, right? Wanting you to go to go that route. But yeah. what do you think are the biggest benefits of you know going this way instead? Uh, I think the. I mean, I'm not saying knocking college at all. Yeah, yeah of both, course. Both are great benefits, right. but um, I think the biggest benefit here is just like you're picking up on uh, NBA things ahead of time before the college players can pick up on that. So I think just you're getting ahead of the game and you're learning how to be a professional. And I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, before we get into your film, I just want to ask, what do you think it is that, that you can bring to an NBA team as a player? Um, I think I could bring effort. too and um, that's one thing that the coaches are trying to get me to do better at because I can't tell them until I want to get better at defense so I just want to show them I can play both sides and I want to win. Yeah and that's all the best players in the NBA are two-way guys right yes, yes. so um, you know just being here it seems like you've embraced that that challenge what they were calling you they call you baby? Baby yeah you heard about that. <laughs> I, caught, I caught on it too late um, it was just one this play where they couldn't put me in the post every time I called it baby but um, just trying to take advantage yeah, of Yeah, but I, I, I walled up, so. Changing my routine, probably my food, my diet. I think my diet changed a lot. Um, I eat a lot more, but like big, more calories. So I think that's pretty much the thing that's changed the most. We got a nutritionist that we talk to every Wednesday. 
And we just learned like the different types of foods to eat, how much fats is in things, um, what food is bad for you, and what food that you think is good for you, really bad for you, like things like that, so. College basketball, that NCA report from back a couple years ago that essentially said, hey, uh, we should get rid of one and done. We should let players pass through who don't want to be in college basketball. And because, you know, the, the NBA and the Players Association are still so far away on ending one and done, this kind of bridges uh, the end of the one and done rule, which may not happen now until the next collective bargaining agreement uh, in 2024, 2025. You know, this is now a legitimate option uh, for players to get in the N NBA's development system and not have to go to Australia and not have to play college basketball if, if that's not the route they want to go. How does this impact college, in your opinion? My reaction initially is how Adam Silver continues to do an amazing job keeping his finger on the pulse and understanding what is best for growing the game and that bridge between collegiate basketball versus high school and the pros. There still will be players, Greeny, that choose to go to the NCAA, as Wolves just alluded to. Number one, because of family dynamics. A lot of times when you're an athlete, people just assume you want to cash in on your talents so very early. But a lot of times, as you start to mature, you realize there's more to life. And there are going to be some parents that still want their son to go to college, whether it's for one year, for a couple of years, to gain an experience and hopefully one day get a diploma. So getting paid this $500,000, we keep acknowledging that number, I need to teach people something. It ain't $500,000. Once you pay Uncle Sam, that's 40%. Once you pay your agent, that's between four and 10%. Once you pay for insurances, that's another 10 to 15%. So we keep saying 500,000, it's really like 225,000. Just to put it in perspective, that's still more than 98% of the world makes. But I'm just acknowledging that these players who take this route, it's an awesome opportunity. But as Woj also alluded to, the stage in collegiate basketball is major. Playing on national TV, having an alumni base to support you going forward. So there is a lot of positives to going to collegiate bas to go play collegiate sports. I'm not going to slam the collegiate game. What I slam is the fact that they try to act like it's amateurism when players should actually have the opportunity to get paid for their talent and their likeness. So here's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing a mature Jalen Rose who has grown up and has experienced a lot of things in life and you understand all these things now in hindsight. But take me back to when you were 18 years old and you were one of the highest recruited players in the country coming out of Detroit and someone says you can either go make half a million bucks or whatever the equivalent of it was to go play in this pre-professional league or you can go to Michigan. Would there have been no Fab Five if you had that option? There would have been a Fab Five. Uh, growing up in the inner city, that just really sounds like hustle and or fast money, which at the time I would have been like, yeah, I'll take it. But then all of a sudden you start talking to smart people around you, like my high school coach Perry Watson, like my mom, they would have made sure, Greeny, that I was going to college. I was not the prospect leaving from Detroit. You saw me in the Fab Five, Doc, say, who want to go to Europe? It ain't Detroit. <laughs> you think I would have got on an airplane to go somewhere internationally? Uh, the weight, the workouts in the weight room, probably just be like, it, it switches between, through the whole week, it'd be like legs, upper body, Sometimes it would be like speed drills. Uh -uh. It would just be different, but we get all around, whole body, through the whole week. That's every morning before practice. No, nah, I was already on that routine already. I had already started that routine um, when I was in LA. How was it like training in LA during the summer? Uh, it was cool. I liked it a lot. It was it was different for me. That was my first time away from home. Uh, first time like moving around without my parents and stuff, so I think it was a very big learning experience for me and I did get better too, so yeah. Did you do anything like specifically to prepare to go to the G League? Nah, it was the same, the same one yeah. just working, staying in the gym.
Your time will come in. You're gonna be great next. How many days we been in the lab? Huh? How many days we been in the lab straight? Seven straight. Seven straight. Got my guy popped out the friends now. For the one time, you know what it is. He popped out to the number with it, five five nine. People that like don't know you, were you always like high in the rankings starting out in high school? Right out of eighth grade, I think my freshman year I was number one in the country. And then I dropped to two, then I dropped to three, and then I went back to one. And then in my senior year, I think underdog, I think that that word in general just describes my hope because I'm from a city that no one really knows about. I'm talked a lot, but at the same time, a lot of people sleep on me because they think this and that is wrong with my game when I've proved them wrong multiple times. I feel like a lot of people have doubted me and I still got to where I wanted to be and I'm still doing that a while right now as I'm saying it, so I think underdog. My younger self, to keep working. And stay in that gym, and no matter what anybody say, just use it as motivation and grind, bro. Because you could do anything you put your mind to. So yeah.